So, um, so yeah, we got we got all the all the new stuff here. All the new stuff. Welcome, welcome. The uh, we're in the we're in the new room. Um, all all that's good stuff. All right. So we'll continue on. We made it into chapter five. So I figured we'd start at chat at the just kind of go through the beginning of chapter five um, again. And as we kind of kind of go through here, and um, for for everyone that has so so to let you know kind of how i do this class i have a a kindle book that is like the study guide uh here and i usually like a couple minutes before i'll read through their questions I'm like oh that's a good question and like highlight on stuff but when i got here this morning i realized when i was setting up in here i forgot this at home and this has all my notes in it as like every, like that all that all that stuff so I don't have my study guide questions as good as I normally do. Um, so, so we may have to figure out some of these, but you guys know how I like to do things. I like to uh, just have a conversation about what's what's going on and what we what we think. So um, chapter, chapter five, and I realize I don't have my little sheet of paper either. Um, you, yeah, do you have the, the sheet of paper? Perfect. So that that's this is all this is all I needed. Just I wanted to. Um, okay, so chapter five, um, you know, I, I thought you know, we talked about, we talked about halfway through it last week, but we'll, we'll hit it again. Um, but it's this, it's the Episcopal ghost, right? Is, is chapter five, is that what's, what's going on? The, um, the, the, I think it's called the, the fat man. And, um, and so he's, he's talking to the spirit. Remember the ghost? It's the ones that are kind of uh, the ones that were in hell and the spirits are the ones that are in heaven. Uh, it's kind of a, an e equal word talking about both of them. And, um, and the, that ghost talks about how the spirit he's talking to, which he has known in his life, was like another theologian, became narrow-minded at the end of his life. And he begins talking about how um, the gray town, I think the most incredible quote from that ghost is oh i see you mean the gray town with continual hope of mourning we must all live by hope must we not with its field for in indefinite progress is in a sense heaven if only we see we, we have eyes to see it that's a beautiful idea and, and that really makes me think of all the times when when we can even fall fall into this trap of calling uh, good evil and evil good, you know, like like do, doing doing things like that. That's that's really how that struck me when we have a temptation to do that. You want to say something, Gloria? Well, I was just saying that the spirit came right out and said what it was. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, and right there he's like, Well, what do you call it? And he's like, Well, we call it hell. <laughs> like that, that. And then and then he then he goes, Well, there's no need to be profane. Right. Yeah, like that. So, like, like that's like that's a that's it, there's a lot of good stuff like that. And and I think it's interesting how um how uh C.S. Lewis then calls it purgatory if they decide they want to leave it behind. And I, I think that's an interesting, an interesting view of that, you know, where, where it's the, the, the there's a continual act of salvation that can, that can happen to people is kind of what he's kind of hit hinting at. And um, I don't know, I just, I thought that was, I thought that was interesting. Um, did, did anyone else have a, have, the Catholic Church always saying it was a purgatory? Yeah, yeah. Purgatory was kind of a, it was always explained to me as a place of sanctification, a place of, of growing more holy, you know, because you grew up Catholic, right? Yeah, yeah. So, but I don't, you know, I'm confused on whether they teach that anymore. I, I think it's, I think it's there. I, I, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah Vatican sure. II kind of, kind of. It wasn't that strong for me, but my yeah. parents say they, there was Fire and brimstone. Yeah, fire and brimstone. Yeah. <laughs> and, and purgatory, right? Yes. Well, yeah. I guess it makes sense the way it goes. And in that, if you do move on, then it was a temporary place. Yeah. Right. Right. If you don't, 
Yeah, it's kind of a it's kind of a fascinating idea, and it really it really messes with our construct of heaven and hell. You know, like it really, and I think that's what this book is brilliant about is it's is it's is that it messes with our 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 understanding of what of what heaven and hell uh, may be, and it's and it's um and it's the view around it. Investor, yeah, I got two questions. Yeah. One on purgatory, the Catholics, you know, yeah. believe in it. And uh, I grew up as a Catholic as a kid, Matt, and been a Lutheran for the last 50 plus years. But um, I was always taught that only the holies of holies would go to heaven. The rest had to go uh, work it off in purgatory. Yeah, yeah. And... Um, the Catholics bring up various verses throughout the Bible that that kind of solidifies it, but I don't. There's nothing mentioned that I know of in the Bible that pertaining to you're going to go to purgatory first and work off all your sins and that your previous yeah. sins, whether they're little ones or major sins. Yeah. In my second, and I know the Lutheran religion kind of poo-poo's the purgatory issue. Yeah. And my second question is, what religion was C.S. Lewis practicing? If um, I believe, I believe he was uh, like Episcopal, like he was oh. part of the Church of England. Okay. And 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 all those all those things. I um, I must be right because Coley would be correcting me if I was wrong right now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like that. That's the. Um, well, I think that I mean the two aren't one and the same anymore. I just don't know about the year that he was walking around. It's like the church of England and the Episcopal church are not the same anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So that. My understanding, he started out as an atheist. Right. Yeah. Okay. He yeah. was a committed Anglican. A committed Anglican. Yeah. yeah. Anglican. So. Who upheld a largely Orthodox Anglican theology. Yeah. So, so Carol's saying that, that he was. What, mainly that's Anglican. It's very Church of England, like Church of England time. And you're, you're, we're talking. This book is right around the beginnings of World War II, is when the and was when this book was written. And so, um, so yeah, so I, I think it's interesting. So what, what he does is there's this ghost at the um, that you know the, this Episcopal ghost that he's talking to. Um, yeah, and and he's like, well, we call it hell, but it could be purgatory if you decide to repent and and kind of come towards the solid, you know, kind of come towards the solid thing. So it's just an it's just an interesting idea. It's it's um, when we're talking about heaven and hell, um, there's very little that is that says in the Bible that. This is how it is. There's a lot of like cryptic things. There's a lot of analogies. There's a lot of those those things. So um, normally when people are like, "This is how it is," I'm always like, "Yeah, like like over there," because normally that this is how it is is whatever they were taught growing up or something like that. So. Um, so that that's I kind of tend to push away some of the, some of those things, and that's why I like how this is expressed, because the way he gives a description of hell is is fascinating, fascinating to me, and it see it just it, it's a it's a place that I would want no no part of, the place I would want no part of. So let's see here. Um, then the then the guy the Episcopal guys he starts talking about his opinions. And he goes, it's just honest opinions fearlessly followed. You know, they're they're and then he then he then he says they were not only honest, but they were heroic, even even as opinions. You know, which is I which highlighted you, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like like you start you start seeing that and you're just like, oh man. And it it kind of reminds me of um like all, all the people that, that do like videos from the inside of their cars now. I don't know if you've seen much of those, and they're they're like no, they won't want me to tell you this, but over there, and it just kind of reminds me of like, oh yeah, they, they view them having this idea as heroic. And, and that, that one really 
gets me as like a pastor because sometimes I can feel like heroic for having an idea. And, and maybe that's a little bit of self-righteousness coming in, you know, and, and that, that's, it's not really my heroic ideas, but it's that I need to be just pointing people towards Jesus and the cross and, and all those things like that. That's, and uh, so that, that's, that's kind of, that's, that, I found that kind of wild. Um, let's see. Um, and then he calls the guy out um, for his heroic ideas that he said, we simply found ourselves in contact with a certain current of ideas and plunged into it because it seemed modern and successful. You know, like that's, that, you know, it's the kind of sayings that would win applause, kind of selling sayings that would sell books, kind of sayings that make you go viral on YouTube for making a video inside your car. You know, it's, it's the currents, it's the currents of the day that seem heroic, that seem important, but it's actually just the flavor of the week, you know? And so, um, yeah, so that, that, that really, that really spoke to me a lot. Um, Let's see. Um, well, that's something you're taught, you're taught to do in college, to think outside the box, to think things through. So it's kind of a hard thing, but you, it, it, the moderating of it through this whole thing is that it, if you just keep getting more narrow, yeah, what you're looking at mm -hmm. and everything else falls aside, that's when you're in trouble. Yeah. It, and and I kind of and I kind of think, I think that the strain of it is when we begin to see salvation in those ideas. Is I I think is kind of what he's talking about. You you have yeah, a face. I was, yeah, I I do because um you said as you become narrow, I think you do become narrow as you leave the bad ideas behind. Yeah. And he called. The spirit narrow minded. So okay. we all get okay. a little more narrow. You can both be narrow minded. In yeah. The, in we, the right thing or the wrong thing. Right. <laughs> we all get more narrow minded, I think, as we get older. But hopefully we're on the right path. And it's all about being on the right path. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Same reverse in that chapter. I've seen something called the middle age error. And that was the first time I ever heard of that. So yeah, he, he talked about the Inquisition. Um, you'll be justifying the Inquisition in, in a moment, and like the Inquisition was not that that was not that far away from here. That was like a hundred years before this, wasn't it? At least that far. Yeah, yeah. From so I mean, we're almost two hundred years removed from that now, and so um, I think I think a lot of that. Um, uh, so, so the way he says that is, um, uh, so, so before we get to that, the paragraph right in front of that, it says this, and it just it tags along with what Carol was saying, and uh, and so and 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 Lee, Lee? Trisha. Trisha, Trisha, gosh, and Frank, I got Frank down, right? Yeah. right, right. Everybody Trisha, Frank. Trisha and Frank. Okay, <laughs> Trisha and Frank, Trisha and Frank. So. Um, <laughs> So, so, um, but the, it says the drunkard reaches a point at which for a moment, he actually believes another glass won't, won't harm him. You know, that, that idea of it, that it's, it's, it's like, oh, I can, I can continue going down this path and I'll be fine. There's a, and so that's what causes him to say, you know, it's, but errors which are sincere in that sense are not innocent. And then he goes, you'll be justifying the inquisition here in a moment. Why? Because the Middle Ages erred in one direction. Does it follow that there is no error in the opposite direction? You know, so, so he's, I think he's, what he's, he's using that to say that, um, that you, 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 gotta, you gotta stop and slow down for a second. I don't know, what, what do you guys hear when he says that? Does that hitch in any, any way? The middle A is aired in one direction. Does it follow there is no air in the opposite direction? But that's that's kind of where, where he misses. And yeah, remember they were hundred years closer to all this than, than we are. I think that 
Yeah. You go ahead, go. Oh, oh, well, I, I don't. That part doesn't hit me so well. I don't, I don't quite understand that part of it. But that part right above that that you were saying, where the the drunkard saying, "Oh yeah, just one more drink, no big deal." I think that's the case that um, I fall into, and probably other people fall into as well. Thinking like, "Oh, things will slow down tomorrow." Oh, if I just get this done, then this. And it's like we aren't really aware of consequences as we do things and yeah. realizing that the same old, same old is just going to keep rolling on down. <laughs> if, uh, you know, unless like we were talking about in the previous week with the repentance, <clears throat> you truly have to turn away from those things. Yeah. 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 And, and I think he's hitting that same idea um, just at the end of that paragraph where you have seen hell, you are in sight of heaven, will you now repent and believe? And, 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 um, and then the guy, and I have these, these highlighted, and, and I'll read them. He goes, but my dear boy, I believe already. May we not be perfectly agreed, but you have completely misjudged me if you do not realize that my religion is very real and very precious to me. Well, very well, said the other, as if changing his plan. Will you believe in me? In what sense? Will you come with me to the mountains? Will, it will hurt at first until your feet are hardened. Reality is harsh to the feet of shadows. Will you come? Um, this, this is the type of stuff that has really affected me over, over the years. Um, the, the fact that he said, well, will you believe in me then? It's, and it's almost like um, it, it's, it's a sense that as I've gotten farther into, into the faith and all that, a sense that I really see that a lot of sanctification, a lot of becoming holy really depends on the church. And what I mean by the church is the people that are around us, that they can help carry us and move us forward that there are days when i'm having a weak day there's days when i'm having not not the best there are years that are not the best you know and it's been the people that have been encouraging as i've gone through that have helped with me and then and then there's times in my life where i've been able to be that to people around me too you know and and i and i, I saw a glimmer of that in this this thing was like, well, will you believe in me? And it's like, I'll help you across the mountains. And it's almost like this guy is, as long as he's like willing to go towards heaven and not go towards, go towards what they talk at the beginning, that narrow way, you know, as long that he'll, he'll get more solid as he goes, but, um, but he's got to be able to decide that. So I don't know. I thought that was, that was interesting. Um, then there was then there was this and this this one also i think messes with a lot of us uh it's the next couple paragraphs down um no said the other so um let's see here considerations. yeah yeah so no said the other i promise you none of these things no sphere of usefulness you are not needed there at all no scope of your talents only forgiveness for having perverted them no atmosphere of inquiry for I will bring you to the land, not of questions, but of answers, and you shall see the face of God. Um, that's, that's a very interesting quote, like the no sphere of usefulness, like, because that's, I don't know, how, how, before I kind of talk what I think about that, like, how does that hit you guys? Does that hit anyone in a certain way? You have to give up that thing that you have to give up yourself. It's back to, I mean, I don't remember where, but yeah. you talk about you know, thy will be done. And, and then he turns around and goes, okay, well, he says, no. So he says, well, now you're going to be done. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. It's, it's, it's giving up of yourself and what's important to you, you know. Yeah. So when you talk, uh, go ahead. When you talk later about happiness in the, in the uh, path of duty, yeah, I think that tied into that. Yeah, yeah. And so, I love that quote. What? I was struck by, I, I felt like everyone is equal. There is no hierarchy yeah. in heaven. Yeah. You know, so uh, like 
everybody serves one and i think he in one of the ghosts that yeah he said, i'll serve you i think it was the big man right yeah yeah i think so and um so if you have yeah, this cool. feeling of self-importance it's not going to work and yeah a little bit of hell coming to heaven yeah <laughs> yeah and i think that that self-importance that self-righteousness yeah. you know that that idea that um and, and i think i think c.s lewis is really gaining on something here um and and it's something that I, I I've seen and I try and I try to do it, but this is where I see it, especially like around the crowd that I'm around here. Um, and also I saw this a lot in Bentonville is what do you do when you retire? What do you do when you retire? You know? I wish I had more time. Yeah, yeah, like that's <laughs> well, well like like some people they lose their entire identity when they retire. You know, I have a brother that hasn't yet because of that. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. it's it's like who you are is is your is your work, and um and so like that's that you know, and so and I think that talks about here that there's no sphere of usefulness. Like God, God, uh, I was looking at old things that we did. I did in Bentonville the other day, and I made a meme. I was trying to put memes on Facebook pertaining to the sermon and it said god god doesn't need us to get anything done but he's chosen to use us so let's go type of thing is how is how i did it and that's really what i see there you know that that's that that it's that idea that that god doesn't doesn't have to have us so so that that's yeah and i really see that there that really stood out to me um let's see so then then in my next page um he starts talking about being a child and um free as a man is free to drink while he's drinking he he will not uh it is not free still to be dry the ghost seemed to think for a moment i can make nothing of that idea it said listen said the white spirit once you were a child, once you knew what inquiry was for, there was a time when you asked questions because you wanted answers. That's that's a huge idea. And, and we're glad when you have found them because, because that child, again, he, uh, even now. Ah, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Like, so he's like using scripture against them there. And you, you've gotten far wrong. Thirst was made for water, inquiry for truth. What what is he when he says you ask questions and you wanted answers? What's he accusing him of now? Asking questions just to be popular and I, I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah, I think I think so. I think I think sometimes when we get in fights with people, this comes out. We'll ask questions in order to win an argument. You know, so sometimes we'll 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 be so convinced of our idea that we. That, that we try to that we, we stop asking questions we've already created our own answers we're an antagonist path. yeah being an antagonist that's a good word for it um when, it, when we started at the seminary uh the first couple classes i'll always remember this they they said a bunch of hard things to us like like they're like one of them was and this may we won't go far into this don't don't let this is an example but they looked at us all and like, you do not have a call. You do not have a call. For, I know some of you say you have a call from God to be a pastor. You have a call when a church calls you. And that that bothered the mess out of like half the crowd. And people, there are a couple people that got up and left and they never came back. Wow. Stuff like that. So, and, and the reason they did that in a couple different ways. And the, the reason why they did that, they were like, we want you guys to be teachable. We, we want, we don't want you to come in here with just like, this is how it's got to be. And they, and they did all that at the beginning to make us teachable. And that's, and I think that's a good spirit for us always to have. They were using that aspect of like boot camp for us. At the yeah. Yeah. It's like, a, like a boot camp thing. You're not so special and you don't know everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so, so that's, um, but yeah, that. 
yeah, yeah. That that whole that whole idea. You know everything I say at sixteen. <laughs> we start losing it. Yeah, you start realizing that other people are smart. <laughs> yeah. Especially your parents. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and sometimes we can take things too literally. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously the ones that left did. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I'm and I. I'm very literal. And I look at that as like a form of like self-righteousness. And I think that's what really this whole section is about is this idea of the self-righteous going through. Um, so they start talking about things of religion. And he says, we know nothing of religion here. We think only of Christ. We know nothing of speculation. So come and see, I will bring you to eternal fact that the father of all over fact of. And he's like, oh, I can't look at God as the fat as a fact. And this, I love this is the brilliance of this imagery. Is think think about that gray town, that nothing is really solid, that nothing is is concrete, you know, that nothing is all that. And so then all of a sudden it comes out of the figurative language of that gray town versus the, the outskirts of heaven where everything is solid and and all those things, and he's talking about, you know, we don't really concern ourselves with religion here. Everything is Christ, you know, everything is Christ, and uh, the, the, there's this eternal fact, and I think he's he's bringing those physical words, those words of substance to in explaining the world that, that they are in, that the grass is cutting their feet, and stuff like that. I, I just think that's that's fascinating, and that's fascinating, and the guy even though the grass is cutting his feet, he still can't see that. Um, and then, then you see that he, that he chooses not to go to the mountains with him. And he says, which reminds me, oh, bless my soul, I nearly forgotten. Of course, I can't come with you. I have to go back next Friday to read a paper. You know, which, which means I got to go back and do my work. Yeah, and that, and so it goes all right back to where he sees his importance in being important. And um, that's, yeah, that's a fascinating idea. That's a fascinating, seeing the importance in being important. Um, and then he kind of goes in this whole thing about, you know, Jesus had grown up and how yeah, Christian. Yeah, kind of a weird thing? Yeah. yeah. That, that, was, that, that really threw me when I read that. Yeah. And, and that's, and, and that, that's, and I think that's just, I think that's C.S. Lewis really showing us like this guy doesn't see the, the crucifixion for what it is. No. That, that it wasn't that, you know, salvation act, that it was, that it, it was almost a pity that it happened so early. And, uh, and so, and so. They Christ was evolving and that he was coming up with these ideas himself. Yeah. So that means, right. Yeah. And, and like, so, so that, that's, I think that's, that's kind of an interesting, yeah. Like that he kind of, we see that he's more interested in like the, the deconstruction rather than, and rather than the reconstruction there. So that's. Um, if I can ask a question about yeah. stuff that preceded this. Yeah. I just got my book yesterday. Oh, okay. So you've been reading it. Yeah. <laughs> I've been reading, but I'm in the middle of chapter nine, which is really long. Yeah. But he was talking about transparent being transparent. Yeah. And it makes me think after reading more of this that God sees right through it. Mm, yeah. He knows exactly yeah. what's going on. And if we're trying to pull something or do something or think of a certain yeah. way. He knows exactly what that is all the time. Yeah, I think he. That, I think that's a. I think it's a strong idea in coming up. Um, it, isn't there like a vain ghost coming up? Everyone that, that has read and a vain, a vain ghost. I think it's. I think it's even yeah, farther than what you're talking. Yeah, and I think. I think the whole idea that she's see through. She doesn't like it all. Yeah, yeah, and it, that's definitely an idea that's brought up at the beginning. That, yeah, that that um, the man, the, you know, the main the main character, is that he um, uh, that he he constantly says that he feels exposed, 
you know, the whole time. And he, every time it talks about the light, how he, he's almost kind of repelled from it. And all those, all those just remind me when Jesus says, like, you know, the light triumphs over the darkness, that, you know, the, the darkness has no light in it at all, and, and things, things such as that. Um, all right, well, let's 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 go on here uh, into chapter six, and um, let's see the the um, the study guide describes chapter six as this: as Lewis continues to explore his heavenly surrounding, he finds that his senses have been altered from what they were in the gray town or on Earth. We also gain further insight into the difficulty of trying to steal from heaven. On earth, such, such a waterfall could not have been perceived at all as a whole. It was too big. It, the sound would have been a terror in the woods for 20 miles. It's kind of their big, big thing here. Um, so in this chapter six, this is where the golden apples are. And there's, there's, we don't really like are introduced to anyone in here. But did, did anything kind of stand out to you before we kind of get into this, into this chapter? Or do you want me to just go ahead and start and we can see where we go? The Garden of Eden. All right, yeah, so you got, did, did anyone else get the Garden of Eden? Yeah. Yeah, you got it, you got it, Lee? Yeah. All right, yeah. Yeah, like, so, Absolutely. yeah, so I'm an idiot. Like, and I didn't, I didn't see it until I read a question in here. I was like, oh gosh, you're an idiot, Chris. Like that's, that's obvious. Well, like part, part of it is it's, it's the golden apples, it's the golden apples. I have banished the idea of an apple being the fruit of the tree because it never says apple. That's a, that's a, um, that's a, that's a Milton thing in Paradise Lost. That's where the apple came from is from Paradise Lost. So like apple just doesn't signify it to me. And so like, so yeah, I'm, I was just. I was ashamed of myself that I missed that meeting. I was putting other things onto it, <laughs> but, but, um, but yeah. So he. Via he, Dolorosa, I don't look that up. What is that? That's in this chapter. Yeah. Dolorosa. Yeah. What? What is? You know what that meant? But that is the route that Jesus took to Jerusalem to Calvary. Oh, okay. Yeah. Where was that? Yeah, I to look that up. When he says the the one smallest apple the guy was carrying, like the Via Della Rosa. Oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah. I, I didn't think of the Garden of Eden. I was thinking of manna and the Israelites. Oh, that's interesting. Because they kept wanting to save back for the next day. Yeah. And the guy was trying to get as much as he could, just worrying that he wouldn't have enough. Right. Yeah. I... There's there's a couple of things I don't know if I if I underlined it. Oh yeah, I did. Um, the was he the same man that um, was just coming to heaven to get some yeah. get things think to so. take back to make money yes. anyway? Yeah. I think he's the same. And Is that the same guy? Was I wasn't guy. sure. I wasn't okay. sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. the man with the bowler, the ghost in the bowler hat, or something. Okay. Yeah, Let's see. Yeah. Let's see here. Is this as seven? Well as the, the That's seven. 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 This guy doesn't have everything okay. on here. Yeah. Well, I I put ghost in 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 the bowler. I I did make a note that it was the same person that was trying to bring something back from heaven to sell. Yeah. All right. Something yeah. Something that nobody else had in hell. Yeah. And on his sin on this little spreadsheet, it says faith in economics. Oh, faith in economics. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so yeah, I have that, I have that giant. Um, I, I just like how he expressed because it first has him go and he falls on top of the water, you know, and he kind of rushes wow. down. And then he thinks about the waterfall and just it's is so grand you can't even encompass how big it is, which is it's a beautiful imagery and I, and I liked this quote a lot too talking about the the guy with the apples here um there it's there it stopped again standing straight up against the trunk as though it were taking cover because the shadow of the branches now covered it i could i could see it better it was my bowler had a companion the the one whom the big ghost had called ike um so that 
I, that he was more visible when he got into the shadows. I thought was an interesting, uh, an interesting kind of turn in there. That that when he was in the sun, he couldn't be seen all that well. I was I was like, oh, that's good storytelling there. Good storytelling. I kind of give like fleshing out this world a little bit more. Yeah. So I I even wrote a note, golden apples, to talk about golden apples, and still didn't miss it. Um, did you notice that tree is capitalized? Yeah. Okay, so that's that 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 was that was the, what, another thing that pointed to me to the Garden of Eden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's and okay. when that was shown to me here in the in this thing, in the um in the study guide, I went, oh, okay. I mean, could I have not seen that? Right. That it's kind of obvious then that he's talking about this tree. That tree. The the tree. Yeah. And so, so then, like, if you if you're thinking thinking about what it means here, then um, it's it's like it's like this journey that they're going through, and that Adam and Eve weren't able to make it past that tree, you know, that it's almost like the tree is in the way of in the way of um, of, of getting up into the mountains and get, getting up into into heaven, and this guy here is trying his best to go after that tree again mm -hmm. yeah so that 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 and and we see the the c.s lewis character that, that he's he's kind of like well i kind of admired him like that he he was trying to pick up all of them then just then got went for the smallest one and he and then, and then he says like I, I i pictured a leaf you know when i tried to pick up the leaf it was a job and this guy has this this apple and um yeah that that's he was able to do it um then okay so then uh so here's the via, via de, de la rosa so I'll, I'll read starting on that sentence yet even so inch by inch still availing himself of every scrap of cover he set out on his via de la rosa to the bus carrying his torture which is which is wild yeah now that we know that that's the way jesus went to the cross that's that's it's a very interesting image as he's taking that back down to hell which then you think about like the Apostles Creed and what we say with that with with Jesus you know descending into hell and three days later you know like rose again and all that stuff so and then fool put it down said a great voice suddenly it was quite unlike any other voice I had heard so far it was a thunderous yet liquid voice with an appall appalling certainty I knew what the waterfall itself was speaking and, and I saw now, though it did not cease to look like a waterfall, that it was also a bright angel who stood like one crucified. It's all kinds of crucifixion language going on right here. Like one crucified against the rocks and poured himself perpetually down towards the forest with loud joy. That's redeeming, right? So, so yeah, then he says, fool, put, put it down. You, know, you can't take that back. Uh, take that back. There's no room for it in hell. Um, so, so yeah. What? So you said redeeming. So like, where? Wh what did you guys get from that? What did you guys see, see from that? What? Jesus. Jesus? Yeah. Jesus. He's pouring his blood out. Yeah. yeah. But it says joyfully. Yeah. Loud joy. In other words, he did it, and he'd do it again if he had to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. So powerful. Yeah. I also saw somewhere that the water, this, which is there's a lot of water in this chapter, yeah. like your baptism. Oh, water, water. like your baptism. Yeah. yeah. I didn't forget that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the um, I I also so there's a lot of imagery here. Yeah, we're basically at the end of this chapter. So um, so he's like, there's no room for that in hell. Stay here and learn to eat such apples, which is which is interesting. Uh, the very leaves and the blades of grass and the wood will delight, will delight to teach you. Um, so I, I love that language too. The very the leaves and the blade of blade of grass. Um, whether the ghost heard or not, I do not know. At any rate, after after pausing for music, it braced itself anew for its agonies to continue with even greater caution until I lost sight of it. So, but I love the, the very leaves and the blades of grass 
in the wood would delight to teach you. That idea right there, I think, is picking up when in the Bible it starts talking about you know, even the stones will cry out. You know, like the creation itself will will cry out and preach to you. And um, uh, uh, Tolkien, who's a contemporary of C.S. Lewis, who wrote uh, the um, the uh, what's it called, Frodo, and all that stuff. The yeah, The Hobbit, and all, all that. Actually, oh. in the Google thing too, it also said he's the one that brought um, Lewis to Christianity. Oh yeah. Well, there there you go. There you go. So yeah, they were contemporaries, authors. He really hits on this a lot about the creation really helping out. So you can see that when he has the old trees in the in those books, the Lord of the Rings trilogies and all that stuff, like the old trees running around and 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 all, all that. That's that's kind of the same kind of imagery. It's kind of coming from the same, a similar place, even though it's a different author. They're, uh, they're, they're kind of coming from a, from a similar place, which is, which is very interesting. So what I like, when you're talking about baptism here, there's a ton, like, especially when you connect it to, to, the, um, to the, the, the tree um, that makes everyone stumble and the guy's trying to take the apples from, and you have this massive waterfall that, that the image of the Garden of Eden is really that it's kind of the headwaters to these giant rivers, you know, that it's almost like those rivers are feeding the creation. And you and then did you see that that waterfall that and you can tell he's using it at, in that imagery because it's too big for him to even comprehend, too big for him to do that just just immense and almost infinite type of idea. And then we see that same waterfall, that infinite waterfall over there then looks like one crucified and and is you know, and so you have still have that sense of filling the creation and going out with joy but of of that, of that almost like that of that love and grace of the crucified and risen lord so that that's a that's kind of where my mind as soon as i made the connection with the garden of eden because i'm, I'm stupid like that <laughs> let's see oh we got well We'll kind of we'll kind of probably have to do the same thing we did last week where we end in the middle of a chapter. Um, but so we have we have chapter seven now, and um, and we meet we meet um, with the cynic. the cynic. Oh yeah, the cynic. Yeah, the that's ghost. the hard bitten ghost. All right. So let's see here. Um. Let me get my bearings here. Oh, well, I do want to go back to that last one a little bit. When he said that apple can't fit into, into hell. Um, that's, that's a callback to what's coming, coming up. And I'm going to ruin the book for you. But, but hell, hell is, we end up finding out that it's no bigger than just a crack that you, that's in the ground. You know, and that's and and that that you know so the things of heaven are, are not even they're too too big too grandiose grandiose too solid you know and that that he's kind of just talking about like like what do you mean that's too big you know so i wanted to go back to that all right the hard bitten ghost so here's here's how the the study guide begins this chapter up to this point lewis has been listening in to various dialogues between ghosts and spirits now he will have a very discouraging conversation with a hard-bitten ghost. And a quote, they lead you to expect red fire and devils and all sorts of interesting people sizzling on grids, Henry VIII and all that. But when you get there, it's just like any other town. So this, this one, I don't know. Um, it makes, I can be, I can, I have a tendency to be cynical um hopefully that's going away some but that that's i think we see that there's really no no hope in, in cynicism there um so i'll start reading it's right here at the beginning um at the end of the first chapter uh looking at the silver fish which started all over the riverbed i wish greatly that to me also the water were permeable that i would love to take a dip so he's kind of thinking about the world around him and longing for it. So thinking of going back, 
said a voice close at hand. I turned and saw a tall ghost standing with his back against a tree, chewing on a ghostly cheroot. It, it was that of a lean, hard-bitten man with gray hair and gruff, but not uneducated voice. The kind of man I always instinctively felt to be reliable. Which I, I, I love that. I don't know, said I. Are you? Yeah, he replied. I guess I've, I've seen about all there is to see. You, you don't think of staying? It's all propaganda, he said. Of course, there was never any question of our, our staying. You can't eat the fruit. You can't drink the water. It takes you all your time to walk on the grass. A human being couldn't live here. All that idea of staying is only an advertisement stunt. This hits hard. <laughs> this is like, I just think um, you can't save yourself, you know? Yeah, what do you, know, what do you mean by that? Can you, can you expound? Well, I think that um, with so many encounters in the gospels of Jesus, you know, turning away the rich young man and that kind of thing. <clears throat> well, then who then can be saved? Well, with God, anything is possible, you know, not with man. And, and that's what I was thinking of that. We just think we can earn our righteousness, earn our righteousness. Yeah. These people are trying to walk on the grass. They're trying to drink the water. They're trying to eat the fruit, but they're not going to be able to do these things on their own. Yeah. And we, and we see, we're already starting to get a vision of it, that it's repenting, um, following after someone that's already there, uh -huh. you know, like they, these, the, these things. And um, it's just yeah. The becoming part that is kind of strange to me. Like, I know this is all allegory, you know, it's not, it's not true. It's just hard to recognize what elements you know sometimes mean other things um and so that's where it's hard for me to wrap my head around literarily <laughs> yeah so i don't know if maybe we should also be reading it like it's in current times too you know before we you know die and that kind of thing as well sometimes this is hard to read literarily for me yeah well and so i think when you're talking about reading in current times I think I think that is a valid a valid idea because um, because one thing uh, <clears throat> see if I can say this well so I don't concern anybody um, one of the things that one of the ways I think we talk about hell that I think talks of, that the Bible talks about it is that a lot of times there's there's hells of our own making when when we are just trying to be completely self-reliant self self-made um that that um like this guy this cynic like he's never going to be happy mm -hmm. he's always going to live in a in a type of hell right well his, his idea mimics the one that was just said about the guy who's trying to get sober and thinks, well, one more drink isn't going to hurt me. It's, it's the same, but in like the opposite sense, when he says, they told me in the nursery that if I were good, I'd be happy. And they told me in school, if I just worked harder at Latin, it would get easier. You know, it's just like this constant cycle of we can't do enough. Yeah. And, and, and he decides to stop trying. Right. Like he, he decides to stop performing any sanctification. And, 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 I, and so like this, it's that attitude is so easy for us to grab and do ourselves that like everything is lost. It's a lost cause. You know, like that's that everyone has just gone off the boat. Uh, you know, everyone is just lost, lost, lost it. I can't, it's everything is terrible. You know, like that, that's, and that's really when I was, when I was listening to this, I was like, oh man, like, cause it's so easy to go into that, that attitude. It's so damaging to other people. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think it's damaging to ourselves and to others. Right. But he was depressed after talking, after talking to him. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good, 
that, that, that he was depressed after talking to him. Yeah. 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 Everybody hurts lives. others. Yeah. Everybody yeah. lies, so why bother? You know, yeah. yeah. Nothing really real. And it doesn't matter what you choose, heaven or hell, you're not going to be happy. <laughs> yeah. Well, all this cynicism came right after the guy professed, yeah, I'm going to stay. Yeah. Yeah, and he started being cynical about all all the all the. Um, I I also wrote a, a note here that the ghost is always expecting everything to come to him, and so he gets angry when it doesn't. And I wrote down laziness. Yeah, you wrote down laziness. Oh, yeah, well, and I think that's I think that's true, and and so and this one really kind of spoke speaks to me. I I mean. Like, like we talk, you know, we talk about, oh, like the church is filled with sinners and all that stuff. It's, it could be easy to be like, oh, well, nothing will ever, good will ever happen. You know? I felt that way in the Catholic church more than I do in this church. I've been oh, yeah? In this church for 25 years, right? <laughs> yeah. But in the Catholic church, I, the way I grew up, I always felt that we would never make it, you know, mm. like no matter what you did, but um here where you're saved by grace there's really nothing you can do to earn it yeah spoke to me and oh, that's okay. why i'm here over the, i i just felt there's they say you know they talk about the jewish guilt there's nothing like the catholic guilt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know, it's uh, alive and well <laughs> it's alive and, it's alive and well in my family yes <laughs> i also put um Oh, obligation. When I had grow to liking the bad eggs. I grew to liking the bad eggs. That was that stood out to me like, okay, we're supposed to eventually like everything that's bad. Right, right. Yeah. 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 Well, Adapt, yeah. he talked about adapting. Well, and I think like I think if you look around the world today, I think you can see a lot of people dealing with this. We're like, well, it's all bad. Well, we'll just let's just go ahead and just destroy it all. You know, and you see that a lot. Like you see that in politics, you see that in toxic churches, you see that in toxic organizations, you see it, you know, in all these things where like you think about the the places like places you've worked where it was just a toxic environment. It was one that everyone there was just cynical and like nothing it nothing's ever gonna make this better, you know? And and that's and you in this like. It, like it, it really shines a flashlight in a dark corner of, of my own self, you know, and and I think that's something that that I saw at one point. I'm not the best at this all the time, but w one of the things I try to do in my teaching and all that is try to give people something to hope in, rather than like like trying to just get them to believe a certain thing. Um, because it's more than empty promises. You actually point us in the direction of hope. Yeah, I try to try to give, try to throw like a buoy out to somebody type, type of thing. And that was something that I, I think I saw at the end when I was about to leave Bentonville, I started seeing that, that, that it, I was like, this, 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 this like all this faith stuff, if it all comes down to it, to a test to where like, are you gonna to go to the good place or the bad place? And that's just empty. It's just empty, you know? And, 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 I, and I went, and I went, so what is all this then? And I was like, well, I think it's giving people hope in something. And, and that's, that's kind of what I see in this book is that it's giving people hope in this like solidness. That you don't have to like snake around in the shadows to grab those apples, take them back down, you know. That that it was like, we'll teach you how to eat those, you know, like that. That's and um, and it seems like the cynical guy just keeps on, keeps on, just driving more and more into into cynicism. Um, I have this one part. It's it's noon right now. We'll go a little, little bit over. We're basically almost done with this chapter. So um, I have a part that I'll read. It's like. I don't know, four chapters from the back. Um, let's see here. Anyway, said the ghost, who wants to be rescued? 
what the what the hell would there be to do here or there i said quite said the ghost they've got you either way Ooh, that's they've got you either way i feel like i hear that all the time right now what would you like to do if you had their your choice i asked there you go said the ghost with a try with a certain triumph asking me to make a plan it's up to the management to find something that doesn't bore us isn't it it's their job why why should we do it for them that's just where all the the parsons and the moralists um, have got the thing upside down they keep on asking us to alter ourselves oh, yeah, love that like keep asking us to alter ourselves but if the people who run the show are so clever and so powerful why don't they find something to suit their public all this poppycock about growing harder so that the grass doesn't hurt our feet now now that's an example what would you say if you went to a hotel where the eggs were all bad as we're sure was talking about all bad and when you complain to the boss instead of apologizing and changing his dairyman he told you that you 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 tried <laughs> if you tried it you'd like the bad eggs all the time i feel like that about the pickled pig's feet things like that <laughs> People tell me that same thing about vegetables. I'm not going. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> like that. Try it again. Yeah, yeah. Try it again. You'll like. You'll, you'll you'll like it. But um, and then then there was this last moment in this. And I'm gonna finish reading through the end of the chapter when he starts talking about rain, and and that's just it's such an image and I love it. Well, I'll I'll, I'll be uh, getting along. Said the ghost after a short silence. You coming my way? There doesn't seem to be much of a point in going anywhere on your showing i replied a great depression had come over me and at, at least it's not raining here not at the moment not not at the moment said the heartbitten ghost but i never saw one of those bright mornings that didn't turn to rain later on and by gum when it does rain here ah you hadn't thought of that it hadn't occurred to you that with with that sort of water they have here that every raindrop would make a hole in you like a machine gun bullet that's the little joke you see. First, all of this to tantalize you with the ground that you can walk on and water you can't drink and then drill you full of holes. But they won't catch me that way. A few minutes later, he moved off. And then the very beginning of the next chapter, I sat still on a, on, on a stone by the river feeling as miserable as I've ever felt in my life. Hither though, it had not occurred to me to doubt the intentions of the solid people nor to question the essential goodness of their country. And he starts talking about the rain and how, how scary that would be. And that's what it made me feel like when I read the end of seven and he started throwing in, I'm like, okay. I mean, I, not yeah. that heaven would be that way, but if it was just, just like uh, Well, like, and that's, uh, yeah. And that, what well, you, you can see that heaven is harsh for these, for these people. And, and, and that's a, that's an interesting idea. The, the harshness of, to go back to the analogy of darkness and light, that, that darkness cannot exist around light. Um, and I'll finish it on this thought. Many of you have heard me say this before. I'll say it again. Um, one of the more brilliant things I've ever said was I, I had, a, I had a, a parishioner and friend in Bentonville who lost a friend kind of suddenly. And uh, I, I talked to him. I said, do we need to go get a beer? And he said, crying over the phone, he goes, I've already started. And I was like, all right, well, I'll meet you at your house. And, and as, we're, as we were talking around his pool in his backyard, he, he just, he, he goes, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to see the other side of this. And, and, and it's this idea that I've been playing with. But I said, it was all dark outside. And he, he lived on this big field. And I said, what's interesting about the darkness and light in, in, the, the, in the darkness, the darkest hours before the dawn, it can feel like the darkness is winning. But here's what I know, is that if I went to the other side of that field and I just lit a match or a lighter, you'd be able to see it. And it feels like the darkness has all this power over it, but something as small as a match or a lighter could beam through all that darkness. 
And, and that, that made them feel better. And, and that's been an idea that, that's, that I kind of felt when I was listening to this about the rain and all that stuff that it's almost this analogy keeps going to about the solid versus non-solid that, that it's, you know, you think we, you think about us just walking to our cars, we're moving effortlessly through the non-solid, you know, and, and that's, that it's scary probably maybe to the, to the non-solid, but as, as we get closer to the light and become more light ourselves, that our solidness comes in the things and, that, and those things that won't damage us because we're, we're made of that. Now. I don't know if that makes any sense, but, but yeah. So that's, that's what I got going on. Anyone have any last, last thoughts here? Nothing? Lee? I, I felt that the cynic ghost felt he was made that way. He was made cynical. Oh. He, I tried, you know, they told me if I did this, this would happen. If I told me I did that, that would happen. And, and, and I think a lot of people feel that way at times. It's like, well, I'm doing everything right. Yeah. Why is this happening? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean, I had a relative say to me, well, if God, God really loved, you know, then why did this happen? Yeah. It's almost like a, a feeling they have no control over anything, you know, like yeah. uh, things happen to them, not they make things happen. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's very depressing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it, and it can be. Cloud over yeah. yeah, the uh, <laughs> yeah. A, another thing that I say to people that are facing death a lot too is um, uh, in Ecclesiastes in, in the Bible, it says meaningless, meaningless, everything is meaningless. Um, it, it's that's that's an English translation. That's actually a bad translation. Um, what meaningless means is actually like vapor, and and kind of like fog, and then and the whole idea is everything is like vapor or fog that you can see it you can almost sense it it's almost saying that life is like that but as soon as you try to grab it and hold it there's nothing there and 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 ecclesiastes the guy is very cynical he's very cynical but i think that idea kind of helps us see through things too that and that i think that the cynical nature of ecclesiastes helps us see that, that God is even there when we don't understand the world. You know, that that's, that things are through when, when we don't, we don't understand why something happened. That, that in our scriptures, there's someone say, that's admitting that. Because I think a lot of times we try to be this pious, it's like, oh, God makes everything happen for a reason. Or God needed another angel or something like that. I, I, I hate all that like tragedy is tragedy but um but yeah so but that cynicalness him bringing depression onto that guy is 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 interesting it's interesting and perhaps we shouldn't think that everything is a lost cause and when and i think when we see that everything isn't a lost cause then that means just by saying hi to our neighbor or something like that actually can be a benefit you know and that's so yeah bring a little light and solid to it all it reminds me that we're just a speck of dust in the galaxy but god loves us yeah yeah <laughs> so so let me let me ask a question so everyone on zoom was this a pretty good experience yeah all right here yeah it's, it's pretty good you can well, hear, I definitely yeah. hear people more but i also just from looking from the above at the table you know the conversation has been better just because i think everybody's facing each other versus the sanctuary too yeah yeah it's easier to hear too what everyone was saying yeah so that's that's good that's good so i, I like i like being here we still have a little bit more more room i think we're going to get some of the skinnier tables um for this for this room is what we're kind of talking about to, to make it where we can get a little bit more people in here but this, this will be easy to set up. I mean, this is a lot easier than what I was doing. This is basically just plug my computer in. And so that's, that's good. That's good. Hey, Pastor. Yeah, Dwayne. Uh, can you set up the room like uh, 
they have in Orlando with the microphones over the tables and that. <laughs> so that's kind of how we have it. That's what this thing is. Oh, <laughs> so it's um, it, it's yeah, it's got an omnidirectional microphone, and um, and so it, it's. I was trying to go for an economical way that would would maybe maybe work um, a little bit, little better. So so yeah. And maybe you could get it more into the middle too, like on a little different table there. Yeah, yeah. Push, push it push it more to the to the middle. Yeah. So it's. But you could actually hear people, which was, which was good. And it might be good that if we remember in this room to, to project a little bit too. So like that's, that may help, help the people, but yeah, we're, we're, we're trying, we're trying to do everything we can. Um, this was a, a fairly economical solution. It was a hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah. But it's great having everyone here. I'll say a prayer for us. Jesus, we thank you that you gathered us all here together. Uh, Lord, continue to open our eyes to the scriptures around us and how you are constantly working in the world that we exist in. Lord, help us to follow after you and um, maybe not to be so cynical. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.